All right, you better get ready for another practice problem. We're gonna use Callahan's theorem, which is energy conservation in a circuit. And this is in this Irwin 12th edition textbook, problem E 1.7. So here we go. So here's our problem. First thing we need to do is read the problem and figure out what we actually need to solve for. So we have this circuit, it has a number of different branches in it, and we want to find the value of the current source Ix. And we see the current source Ix, this value is uh, for this component here. So let's just write that in the upper right hand corner, because that's what we want to find eventually. Ix is equal to. However, we can't just figure that out directly. We actually have to look at the pal balance of power in all the components. So what we have to do is add up the powers, find the powers for all the different components, and then add them up to figure out this missing value of the ix. So we can start from anywhere. I'm going to start from the left, but we could start from anywhere. Anyway, we need to write down all the power values. So I'm going to start with p1, and now we need to find the power for the 5 amp current source, and then the power for um, ix, and then the power for component for element 2, the power for element 3, and then the power through the 10 volt source. All right, so these are a lot of components, but we just go step by step. So let's look at P1 first. So looking at the leftmost component, we have, first of all, we're going to go and see where is the current going? It's going into the component. So that means it's absorbing. Oh, but wait, where is the voltage? Well, we can see that we know the voltage over here. It's positive to negative 25. And because these are the same node, the same electrical connection, they have to have the same electrical potential. So this will be positive, and these are exactly the same. So these are in parallel is what they call it, we call it. And so the voltage here will also be 25 volts. So we have 25 volts and 1 amp. So that's going to be 25 watts, and we know that that's absorbed. Great, first one done. Now let's go to the next one. So we have 25 volts, we see that, and we have 5 amps. So we can start there. So 25 volts five, times 5 amps. So it's going to be 125 watts, and that is going to be, what is it going to be? Let's look at our problem. The current is coming out of the positive, so that means it's being supplied by the current source. So we can say supplied here. All right, now we just keep going down the line, and then at the end we'll add them all up. So here we have PIX. Okay, well this is our kind of weird one, but let's, let's see what we can do. We know that we are going to have, we already have 10 volts here, but we don't know the current. So we're going to keep that as a variable. So it's going to be 10 volts times Ix. So we don't know the exact value yet, but we can see that current is coming out of the uh, positive. So we're going to call that supplied. All right, so let's go to the next one. Here we have 15 volts. But what about the current? Well, the current is actually going to be exactly the same as the current through this branch. So it also has to be Ix. So it's going to be Ix. So we can write 15 volts here times Ix. We don't know what Ix is yet, but we're going to solve for it later. So let's keep it as a variable. We see that this is actually coming out of this element, element 2. So that is actually supplying power. So it's going to be that, and we're going to write supplied. All right, next one, P3. We have 15 volts, and we see we have two amps coming in here. Because it's going into the positive, it's absorbing. So I'm going to write that over here. Absorbing power, and we can just do 15 volts times 2 amps, going to give us 30 watts. All right, final one. We have 10 volts, 
And what's the current? Well, the current has to be the same through this whole entire branch. So it has to be two amps. And we can just follow this direction. It's going to be two amps and it's going to be going into this voltage source. Now we call it a source, but because it's going into the positive, it's actually absorbing power at this time. So that can be a little bit confusing for some students. But if the arrow is going into the positive, it's absorbing power in the circuit. Okay, and then let's write down the values. 10 volts times 2 amps, that equals 20 watts. Okay, so now we have all of our powers. Now we need to figure out what is this Ix going to be. So we're going to do power balance. So let's do absorbed here. And then we know that have to, has to exactly equal the supply. So, and I guess we'll put a big P here just so mathematically accurate. Okay, there, now let's just write down what is absorbed. So we have 25. Uh, I'll write them all out just for completeness. So it'd be P1 plus P3 plus P10 volts. Let's just write them out here. now here. 25 watts plus 30 watts plus 20 watts. That has to equal the other one. So it's going to be P by A, P plus PIX plus P2. And let's just write down what we have. We have 125 watts plus and now we're going to get 10 volts IX plus 15 volts IX. All right, well, we have one equation with just one variable that we need to solve for. So we should be able to solve it. So let's add this up. This here is going to be 50 and 75 watts. And then on this side, we're actually I'm going to move this over if that's okay. We're going to minus 125 watts here. And then we'll just have, add those 15 and 10 together. So we'll have 25 volts times IX. Okay, let's see if I can subtract here or not. Okay, so 75 minus 125 is negative 50. And you're like, what? How can we have negative powers? Just go with the math for now. It'll come out. And then we'll talk about what it is in the circuit equals 25 volts and ix okay algebra we can do this ix is going to be equal to oh yeah sorry i was going to move it but i'm going to keep it on the left side divide them through and we're going to get a negative two and the units we know it's in current so it's going to be negative two amps and so our final answer is going to be negative two amps what does that mean? Okay, well, let's look at it. So this is our answer. Congratulations, you got it. One part is finding the answer, and then the next part is making sure it makes sense and like, what does this mean in the circuit? So let's take this back to the circuit. So we drew the current going upwards here, but the value is actually going to be negative. So when you define your direction, we've defined it upward here. If it's negative, it just means that the real, the actual current is flowing in the opposite direction. So here we have a negative two amps, which means that the current is actually going to be flowing downward through this. So that's just how it works out mathematically. We don't have to change anything in the drawing. It's just a, in the actual current, it would be going down this um, branch rather than up. So we use Telehen's theorem by finding each of the individual powers. We know that this Power absorbed and power supplied have to be exactly equal. So we can use that to figure out our missing variable, which was our IX, and we found that it was a negative 2 amps. So that's the end of this problem.